Okay, this is a very brief tutorial to Embryo. I'm going to talk through um, the main components in Embryo and just go through the example files in the latest release, which is uh, 0.50. So if I go up to here, I get the Embryo component, pop it on the canvas, and you'll see that you automatically get these three, uh, three of the four quadrants of the grasshopper canvas. Um, have these labels, parent, child, ingredients. Now parent is just your usual grasshopper canvas. You can do anything here, uh, like I can put the embryo component down here, and this is essentially where we'll be controlling um, the definitions that we're creating from this here. But what goes into a definition? Well, the ingredients tab here is stores all the components that will make up the grasshopper definition. Um, so you can think of it, yeah, basically as ingredients for a recipe. Um, and when we get to the first example, we'll see some example of those. And the child area of the canvas, this third uh, quadrant here, is where the machine-generated uh, definition will be produced. So it will appear here, and we'll see um, as soon as we run embryo from this kind of parent zone, we end up with this kind of child definition. So let's just open the first one. Okay, there's a bit of an explanation in this text here you can read. Um, essentially, this is probably the simplest setup you can have with Embryo, where you have uh, a reset button, a bit like Kangaroo, just to tell it to go. Um, you have a set number of sliders and components that are going to make up your definition, which you can define here. These genes, um, if you leave them blank, um, you'll need to put in something in this random override. Essentially, it's random override is a bit like a seed, a random seed. Well, it is a random seed, sorry. And um, this overrides any of these genes that make up the definition. We'll see when we're evolving kind of definitions later why they become important. We don't need to put anything in those. And here we have the settings. So settings component is actually here, embryo settings. We have a number of settings. Let's just show full names. Oh, full names. Um, preview will essentially instruct uh, when the machine generated definition is created whether uh, we show the result or whether we don't. Um, the slider domain, these are the domain of the parameters so the, the slides get automatically produced are within this range. One-to-one -one, one -to -one means that um, every output can only be connected to one input so of course in a traditional kind of grasshopper definition every output um, can be kind of hooked in to uh, several inputs. So we'll keep that at false at the moment. Um, these are some grid settings, just size of the definition, so the way that the components are placed on the canvas. Um, some of them here, so sometimes when a component doesn't work, um, we want to remove it from the definition. This will automatically kind of delete it and get it out of the way. Remove dead, so if you have a, um, I'm, I think it's just red error ones. I think if they've got a warning, it'll still keep them, but. Um, and then only terminals is kind of like preview, but it just displays only the components at the end of the definition. So that's defined by any components that don't have any uh, outputs, so are not hooked up to anything further down the line. So they have um, only dependencies. Okay, so I'm just going to hit this true, and you'll see that this definition here is created. Um, I can't actually, now these are made, I can't change the um, the value of these sliders. <clears throat> but this is actually now a machine generated um, definition and it has four sliders and it has eight components, but it doesn't have eight components. The reason it doesn't have eight components is because we've removed dead. And let's say it tried to put a line component down first, it would look for a line component, it would look for points. Um, and if there were no points, it would just get rid of it. Um, or it would just leave it there with no input. So here the remove dead. This is kind of then a maximum value of components. But if I increase the components, of course I increase the number of components that are made. And the order these are made is completely dependent on hierarchy. So you see this one here only has dependencies on this kind of column. And um, the reason why in this definition, this is just points and lines, and the reason in this definition that we have only two columns is because um, we can't connect a point to a line and we can't connect anything other than these. It's kind of strictly defined by these components. 
So you may ask why, why these components? Um, the reason why is because we put them over here in the ingredients. I'm just going to turn the full names off again. Um, so here in this ingredient zone, and Embryo kind of picks up anything, any components in this range. Um, I think you can disable them and enable them if you don't want to use them. Um, you can also copy and paste them components here. So And this will increase the likelihood of the point being selected over the line. Because at the moment we're just using this random override. So essentially we'll just, uh, the way it works in the background is it's kind of picking a function and it when it puts the function down it also picks an output. So you can imagine every one of these uh, let's just turn this off. By the way, if you if you set to false, you can then just you know operate on this as you would usually, and you can drag these around and move them back here. Um, so of course, if I put down a point here, uh, good old nut chestnut. Um, if I put down a point, I'll only be able to put in a number. Um, I mean, Grasshopper has this kind of automatic casting thing, so you can put in a line and it'll cast it to a length. And, all this kind of thing. Um, but essentially Embryo uses a lookup table to say, okay, this is a fine input um, to put in. And then it will try and put that in. Um, and there's a kind of something in the background that says, okay, these, before I put this point down, let's imagine there's no nothing connected. Um, these are what are called willing outputs. So these are outputs that are available for this component. So it might be that it just it basically makes a little sublist of all the willing outputs for this com this one parameter input on this component. And then it goes, okay, pick one of these randomly, because we're using a random override, and then it goes, pop, okay, I'm going to connect that up. And that's how it works, essentially. Um, and that's why we have these metric genes and topology genes and function genes. The metric genes control the value of the parameters, the sliders. Um, the topology genes um, control the kind of how the definition is wired up, and the function genes control which of these ingredients are selected. So, okay, let's just run this again, and you'll see this again appears, and we can change this seed and we can get different definitions. Okay, so that's the basic one. I'm going to open now um, the second one, which is called Get Geometry. This introduces a few more. Uh, components are just let's have a look at this definition so here I've got a couple of points a box by two points and rotation in the plane sorry I'm also drinking coffee whilst I'm talking so that's why I go silent sometimes if I hit go in this case we've got uh, 32 components and 16 sliders and you'll see that um, We've got lots of rotation transforms kind of picked up after each other. And we've actually run out of... Um, ...values here. Now the reason we've run out of values is because this def definition has something called one-to-one -one being used. So if you'll note that every output on every component only has one output, uh, is connected to one input. If I go back and I go to here and I'll go false, you see I start to get more spaghetti, but it does mean that at least every component is then connected up with the geometry and angle on the plane. And I think in this case it will take a point and cast it to a plane. So that's why we're getting these kind of slightly odd um, definitions. So, I mean, part of the reason, it might seem like gobbledygook here, but part of the reason for MBO is to kind of come up with kind of unique and interesting ideas, I suppose, and then be able to think about, okay, how has the machine generated this, and why is it generated this, and can we interrogate this, um, just like a kind of, I suppose a bit like a grasshopper definition created by a consultant, or that you kind of open, you go, okay, I've got no idea how this works. Anyway, I'm waffling, but, uh, ah, here we have another uh, little embryo component here. So if you note, when I made this definition and created this definition, um, we also included something off the parent canvas. So in this case, it's an XY plane. This is one of the XY planes you can see it here. Um, this little tag is in the parent thing. It's called parent output. And if we tag something like this, it means that it will be included in the definition itself. So those willing outputs I mentioned before, um, it 
one of these included. And you can have lots of these, okay? So you just need to kind of tag it with this component. It automatically detects that it will be included in the definition. I'm just going to reduce the number of components here. Okay, so it's a bit more manageable. And then it will be included. Uh, and of course, if I hit, if I change the random override now with this definition, um, it will come up with all kinds. Of, sometimes it will even like get a bit confused and lock and take a while. But um, that's due to the complexity of the definition. And there's nothing. There's no real way around that in the sense that um, if we just tweak sliders a bit like in Galapagos, um, you know, we're optimizing sliders and numbers. Um, we're still confined within the definition we make. In Embryo, we're making a whole new definition. So the combinatorial possibilities are just ridiculous. You know, they're kind of larger than number of atoms in the universe, etc., etc. Um, so occasionally we will sometimes get a lock. Um, it, it depends on the ingredients and the definition that you're making. Obviously, with something simple like this, points and boxes, kind of not so likely. Um, but we do have this definition that's made. So I'm just going to make it a little bit... I mean, it's kind of curious the way that this is machine-made. I find it kind of interesting myself. But uh, let's go back to 32 and maybe change it to slightly something slightly different. Okay, thinking a bit. So we've got quite a complicated definition here. Um, but at the moment, um, we're also using this thing called get geometry. So this get geometry component, in essence, this will collect anything from the generated definition that is of type geometry. So any surfaces, any B reps, any meshes, etc. It will collect them here, and we get some nulls, of course, if some haven't been successful. Um, and then we can do whatever we want with it, like measure volume on the main canvas, color them in a certain way. I'm just going to uh, delete this because I'm going to show you this uh, final component called um, column step. In this cognize tab, there's a series of components that, let's say a machine generates definition that makes no sense. Um, we can use some of these components to try and understand um, the definition. And this will step through the column. So if I just move this, the components are going to output from this embryo component here, the main embryo component. Let's just move this up here. And I'm going to step through. And you'll see that um, it will preview the columns one by one. And that's kind of important because... Um, yeah, like I say, we look at the dependency hierarchies of this model and we step through them one by one. There's also, um, what's this, component step. And component step will do the same thing, but instead of looking at columns, it will do individual components. So you watch this here. It's kind of going to... Let's go 72... And it looks at the dependencies again, so it will only light up a component if all its dependencies are are there. And this is the order. This actually reveals the order that it's made this definition, which is quite interesting in itself. Um, so we can take a, we could essentially take a part of that, uh, set this to false, and then delete all these. And of course, we just take this, and we can. We can delete or whatever. We can now use this on the main canvas. Obviously, the spaghetti, because we've got so many parameters, um, it's quite hard to uh, understand. We can reduce the parameter values. Let's say we had three. And now, of course, because we've got so many components, it's trying to use this many just parameters. If I go back to false, I can actually go back and, and change these parameters now. Um, so the true kind of is defining that embryo is in control of your definition. When you hit false, you're kind of back in control of it. And you can go back and try and interrogate what it's done. 
Okay, and I'm just going to show um, the final one, just in this kind of quick introduction, is how you use Embryo with something like Galapagos. Um, it's actually quite a dumb example in the sense we're just going to optimize the random seed, but um, in a future video, and, and actually I think in some of the examples included, there is a, a GA uh, that will evolve geometry to a target geometry. Um, this is really simple. This is um, using a definition to look into a combinatorial problem that's inspired by, there's a game show in the UK, it's called Countdown, and something called the Numbers Game, um, which is a little game they play and they have 30 seconds to solve the problem where they have to hit a target number between uh, 1 and 999, it's chosen at random. And they have six <clears throat> They have six numbers and they can combine them in completely different ways. So I looked up on YouTube what's the hardest one, and one of the hardest one was this, this one, which is these numbers, 4, 5, 6, 7, 25, 50, and they had to get to 314. So that was the target. And they can use any mathematical operators. In this case, I've just put down some addition <coughs> components, a subtraction and a multiplication component. So these are uh, these are standard mathematical operators, and it's a classic combinatorial problem. And if I hit go here, you'll see Embryo just combines a series of operators and it's actually using something called the parent. So a bit like that parent output, which takes stuff from the parent canvas, the parent input will get stuff from the machine generator, So, and not just geometry. So the get geometry thing that I showed you before gets just geometry and get loads of it, whereas the parent input will actually tag an input and try and connect that input. So it almost includes this input in the machine generated um, definition. Um, so it's a way of getting nice stuff back from this machine generated definition back to the main canvas. And here we're using a parent output on these. Because I want to use defined parameters, uh, I've got the parent output tagged here. And the parent input is in here. So, And then we do a little jiggery-pokery just to say, um, just to find the distance from the value it's created and take the absolute value. And then we're trying to minimize this value here. I mean, at the moment in this definition, we're getting the result is 10,993, which of course is miles away from 314. And this little display just is just a line length that shows how close we are to the result. So when this line gets to zero, um, we know we're solving the result or solving the problem. So hopefully, actually just to say, like manually, this is quite hard to do. A human can do it, but it takes, you know, 30 seconds at least. Um, so I'm just going to plug in Galapagos, so we're going to operate on this random slider, the random seed slider. So in theory it doesn't actually matter which solver we use. I'll use the annealing solver because it's essentially doing a kind of brute force random search with regards to this problem. And I'm just going to hit play. So you'll see it's trying to look at all different combinations of wires and functions. And we're getting within one. We've not hit the. Let's go again. It's getting close, but it's not hitting zero. It might be for this problem, there's a bit of a sweet spot, but let's just have a look at this one. So let's go OK. And we'll see that uh, it's got to 313, so it's got to within one of the target. And how has it done that? Well, it's combined. Um, so what have we got here? So 4 times 50 is 200, and 25 minus 7 is, of course, 18. And what else have we got? So we've got the next layer. We've got 200 plus 5. Okay, fair enough, is 205. And then we've got 6 times 18 is 108. Right, interesting. So 108 plus 205 gives us 313. Um, so okay, I mean, it's it, you can follow this, you can see how it solved the problem, but it is a combinatorial problem. It's usually outside the bounds of just setting up parameters in in uh, Galapagos, even for this simple problem. So I'm just going to leave this now. I'll, if you open the um, shape analysis 
uh, example. I'm not going to talk through this. It essentially does a similar thing, but this time we're using gene pools uh, and we're using this metric topology and function genes and we're evolving geometry to hit a target geometry. And so essentially it's making a parametric model. There's two kind of things for I two functions or two uses I could see of embryo being useful. One is to kind of create things like novel ideas or novel combinations of components, a bit like a shape grammar system would. Um, the second is to have more directed search. So again, a bit like evolution of shape grammars, but you know, if we if we hand this thing a target geometry or something to aim for that's made in a different way, can embryo come up with a new definition um, that kind of gets closely closely matches that uh, previous definition, or, pre or just the model, the, the CAD model. So in a way, making parametric definitions from scratch um, that m match geometry, I find that kind of quite interesting. And doing it within a parametric environment is slightly different than a traditional shape grammar uh, approach. So if you think of all these little components, they have certain rules and they have inputs and outputs, just like a shape grammar. Um, and Grasshopper has this thing where every method, so every model of creation of a point, let's say, is entirely defined by the component. So, for instance, a line will have uh, this method of creation, but it also has, uh, of course, like the start, direction, length. So different, but it's all defined by the component. So if I put this in here, I might get a different result uh, because I'm using a different grammar rule. Anyway, thanks for uh, getting this far. I will shut up now and uh, please leave any questions in the uh, Grasshopper group and enjoy playing with Embryo.